Hello everyone, welcome to this week's Gran Turismo 7 Daily Race C Race and Strategy Guide. This week we're off to Fiji International Speedway in the hot mess that is the Group 1 category. We've got 13 laps to get round, we have tyres at times 1, fuel at times 1 as well, just the racing medium tyres available, no mandatory rules for this one as far as I am aware at the time of making the video. BOP is on, it's the mid speed BOP, damage is light and still as sensitive. Formation start and slipstream is real. And yeah, as I said, we're in a bit of what's, you know, a bit of a hot mess, the Group 1 category in Gran Turismo 7 with the hybrid LMPs, the standard LMPs, the Group C cars and the Division Gran Turismo cars as well. Definitely something that needs to be addressed in the game that most people would agree with that they need to be kind of separated in terms of a category. But one car looks like it will come to the fore in this one and that is going to be the Porsche 919 Hybrid. We had the recent Nations race here at Fuji in Group 1 and this was the car that was dominating the leaderboard and I would expect it to be exactly the same this week. It's a nice handling car, it doesn't do anything too weird, you do have to be a little bit wary of it on the power in second and third gear. And in terms of the hybrid, it tends to keep the hybrid alive fairly well. You can lose it a little bit so do look out for some tips over the course of the week from other people on how to keep that hybrid alive. Basically the Porsche gather its hybrid under braking and also under acceleration. It seems to sort of uh, boost itself quite nicely in 7th gear and if you're in the braking zones and you kind of delay your downshifts it does tend to help build up that hybrid as well. But yeah, quite difficult to manage but uh, if you can get on top of it it's probably worth around about 3-4 to four tenths of a second per lap. So definitely worth experimenting with a few things to try and get that hybrid. Particularly out the last corner, that's where you're really going to feel it if you lose the hybrid, it's out of this last corner that we are approaching. In terms of strategy though, nothing much to say on that one. Times one tyres and fuel, just the medium tyres available, no mandatory rules, it's obviously an absolute no-brainer, no-stopper this one. And yeah, the tyre wear, as you can see, in the bottom right hand corner there, is nothing to worry about, particularly under this new tyre wear model, which there will be a video about later on in the week, so do look out for that and she'll give you my opinions on what I currently think of this new tyre wear model. In terms of finishing time, we're looking at 18 minutes 41.9 for my run, I suspect that'll get down to around about 18, 15, 18, 20 by the aliens eh, as the week progresses, but yeah, that's pretty much it for this one. There's uh, obviously no strategy whatsoever. It's very likely going to be a Porsche 919 Hybrid 1 make, which is a little bit of a shame. I did try a couple of other cars just to see how they compared lap time wise. I don't own all the Group 1 cards on my account. Uh, I did try, try the Audi R18. It ran out of hybrid after about three corners. The new Toyota Hypercar felt like a bus in comparison to the Porsche. Uh, and I don't own the Toyota TS050, which I suspect will probably be the next best car after the Porsche. Uh, and yeah, I'm interested to give that one a little bit of a try myself because I don't think there should be any hybrid worries about that car. That was always that car's strength was its ability to maintain that hybrid. But yeah, this one's it's all about that dirty air, I'm afraid. Group 1 cars obviously got a lot of aero. Uh, there's a lot of corners here where you're going to feel that loss of aero if you're close behind another car. So I suspect it's going to be very difficult to get to uh, close enough to another car to go for an overtake uh, or a legitimate overtake on pace alone. A uh, little bit of a shame that because, well, you know, that's why we need the strategy in the race. We need something that can help you kind of try and pass uh, a car that's holding you up or getting in your way in some other ways. But if it being a no stopper, you're very much going to be at the mercy of that dirty air. And I would also imagine that the old uh, damage model is going to play its part in this one. Unforgiving cars, approaching corners at very high speed, little mistakes are going to be sort of, uh, you know, exaggerated a little bit so yeah I think there's going to be a lot of little bumps and, and shunts and people causing each other uh, damage to the front and their rear of the cars at least though there's no barriers in this one like we had at Sardinia so yeah you're not going to be kind of just clipping a barrier with the slightest little touch and picking up suspension damage but yeah I think that'll be the story of this one probably more of a frustrating week uh, than a fun week I think for a lot of people 
Uh, certainly not a combination that I am a huge fan of. I don't mind it when it's a bit of strategy and I can try and do something differently to get through the pack, but when it's just a no-stopper, I don't think it's quite as much fun. But let's uh, jump into a lap guide here. We're in the Porsche 919 Hybrid, down towards turn number one. Looking for the kerb on the left-hand side there. You don't want to get as far as the kerb before you're on the brakes. If you brake uh, on the kerb, you'll probably run a little bit deep for turn one. Get it into the apex, get the car straightened as much as you possibly can, get it on the power, and then use that hybrid to boost out. You should have plenty of hybrid coming out of turn one with the braking zone there. Coming into turn two, very, very fast left hand, around about 75 metres, just maybe a wee tiny dab in the brakes, maybe just a lift off the throttle, uh, but you can carry a tremendous speed through here, but it's very hard to be accurate. Uh, very easy to either cut the corner on the inside or run wide and pick up a penalty. Through 100R, if you can go through their full throttle, you should help boost your hybrid up a little bit. And then coming into turn four, I look for the orange bollard on the right hand wall as my reference point for this corner. You can try to get it into the apex, you can help uh, with the camber there, will help the car a little bit around. We missed it completely. I was doing this lap in cockpit view, and it's very hard to see the apexes uh, when you're in cockpit view. The gantry, the Dunlop gantry, has just gone out of shot in the top uh, right hand corner of the screen is your reference point for the chicane. Just after that you can brake, get the car into the corner nice and early. If you get too deep there, the car is very cumbersome at slow speeds, so quite an important corner to make sure you hit the apex on. Using the white marker on the left hand side of the track there as a bit of a reference point to come into these tricky corners now at the end of that. We're all off camber, do be careful on the throttle as you're coming through this section. All these corners are kind of on a, like a crest of a hill and if you get on that throttle a little bit too vigorously then you will very likely, you've had a very good chance of spinning the car out. The orange barrier on the inside of the last corner is your reference. Lots of different lines to take through this corner. Some people go tight, some people run it wide to get a better run onto the straight. It's always one of these corners you find cars going side by side and it can become very awkward. But that's a lap of uh, Fuji International in the Porsche at 919 Hybrid. Hopefully that's been useful in some way, shape or form. Do look out for some other guides from the usual suspects. They'll maybe give you some good advice on how to work that hybrid a little bit more than that. Uh, what I have managed here. I'll certainly be looking for some advice myself because I was definitely struggling to keep it alive uh, towards the end of the lap. But we shall wrap things up there. I'm a little bit disillusioned with Gran Turismo 7 at the moment with the lack of strategy, the one uh, make metas as well. This new tyre wear has certainly not kind of gone down very well with me either. But I've tried to keep the video as positive as possible. If you've enjoyed it, please hit that like button. Please hit that subscribe button. Thank you very much for watching and I shall see you on the next one now. Goodbye.